A chilly Arctic summer has left 533,000 more square miles of ocean covered with ice than at the same time last year an increase of 29%. The rebound from 2012's record low comes six years after the BBC reported that global warming would leave the Arctic ice free in summer by 2013. Instead, days before the annual autumn refreeze is due to begin, an unbroken ice sheet more than half the size of Europe already stretches from the Canadian islands to Russia's northern shores. Ice sheet graphic JPG plus 4, how an SIDC got its figures wrong and then kept quiet, since publication of the original version of this article, the uh, source of the figures the NASA-funded National Snow and Ice Data Center and SIDC was discovered to have made a huge error and then quietly corrected the figure without mentioning it. On September 4, NSIDC, based at the University of Colorado, stated on its website that in August 2013 the Arctic ice cover recovered by a record 2.38 million square kilometers 919,000 square miles from its 2012. News of this figure was widely reported including by Mail Online on September 8. But on September 10, the NSIDC quietly changed it to 1.38 million square kilometers 533,000 square miles, and replaced the original document so the old figure no longer shows up on a main Google search. It can now only be found on an old cached page. The figures in this article have now been corrected. Prompted by an inquiry from green blogger Bob Ward, the NSIDC spokeswoman Natasha Vizcar said the mistake was a typographical error, telling him, there are no plans to make a statement on the change, because it was not an error in the data the Northwest Passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific has remained blocked by pack ice all year. More than 20 yachts that had planned to sail it have been left icebound, and a cruise ship attempting the route was forced to turn back. Some eminent scientists now believe the world is heading for a period of cooling that will not end until the middle of this century a process that would expose computer forecasts of imminent catastrophic warming as dangerously misleading. The disclosure comes 11 months after the mail on Sunday triggered intense political and scientific debate by revealing that global warming has paused since the beginning of 1997 an event that the computer models used by climate experts failed to predict. In March, this newspaper further revealed that temperatures are about to drop below the level that the models forecast with 90-90% certainty. The pause, which has now been accepted as real by every major climate research center is important because the model's predictions of ever-increasing global temperatures have made many of the world's economies divert billions of pounds into green measures to counter climate change. Those predictions now appear gravely flawed. The continuing furor caused by the Mail on Sunday's revelations, which will now be amplified by the return of the Arctic ice sheet has forced the UN's climate change body to reconsider its position. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC was due in October to start publishing its fifth assessment report a huge three-volume study issued every six or seven years. It will hold a pre-summit in Stockholm later this month. There won't be any ice at all. How the BBC predicted chaos in 2007 only six years ago, the BBC reported that the Arctic would be ice-free in summer by 2013, citing a scientist in the US who claimed this was a conservative forecast. Perhaps it was their confidence that led more than 20 yachts to try to sail the Northwest Passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific this summer. As of last week, all these vessels were stuck in the ice some at the eastern end of the passage in Prince Regent Inlet, others further west at Cape Bathurst. Shipping experts said the only way these vessels were likely to be freed was by the icebreakers of the Canadian Coast Guard. According to the official Canadian government website, the Northwest Passage has remained icebound and impassable all summer. The BBC's 2007 report quoted scientist Professor Wieslamis Lofsky, who based his views on supercomputer models and the fact that we use a high-resolution regional model for the Arctic Ocean and sea ice. He was confident his results were much more realistic than other projections, which underestimate the amount of heat delivered to the sea ice. Also quoted was Cambridge University expert Professor Peter Wadhams. 
he backed Professor Maslowski, saying his model was more efficient than others, because it takes account of processes that happen internally in the ice. He added, this is not a cycle, not just a fluctuation. In the end, it will all just melt away quite suddenly. BBC Plus for leak documents show that governments, which support and finance the IPCC are demanding more than 1,500 changes to the report summary for policymakers. They say its current draft does not properly explain the pause. At the heart of the row lie two questions, the extent to which temperatures will rise with carbon dioxide levels, as well as how much of the warming over the past 150 years so far, just 0.8 C is down to human greenhouse gas emissions, and how much is due to natural variability. And now, much bigger, the spread of Arctic sea ice on August 15, 2013 plus 4. And now, much bigger, the same NASA image taken in 2013 the IPCC claims its models show a pause of 15 years can be expected. But that means, that after only a very few years more, they will have to admit they are wrong others are more cautious. Dr. Ed Hawkins, of Reading University, drew the graph published by the Mail on Sunday in March showing how far world temperatures have diverged from computer predictions. He admitted the cycles may have caused some of the recorded warming, but insisted that natural variability alone could not explain all of the temperature rise over the past 150 years. Nonetheless, the belief that summer Arctic ice is about to disappear remains an IPCC tenet, frequently flung in the face of critics who point to the pause. Yet there is mounting evidence that Arctic ice levels are cyclical. Data uncovered by climate historians show that there was a massive melt in the 1920s and 1930s, followed by intense ray freezes that ended only in 1979 the year the IPCC says that shrinking began. Professor Curry said the ice's behavior over the next five years would be crucial, both for understanding the climate and for future policy. Arctic sea ice is the indicator to watch, she said.